everyone, it's Mr. Ninmer here. Welcome back to another episode of Saint Madness. I'm sure you're very excited to see the results from last episode because we had three great saints and the votes were closer than ever. Before we reveal the winner though, let's review what we learned about those saints. <laughs> First up today in our Saint Trivia, we have Saint Moses the Black. To repent for his sins, Saint Moses the Black gave up all of these things, except which one? And the correct answer is talking. He still allowed himself to talk, but he gave up eating, sleeping, and drinking. Now our question for St. Therese of Lisieux. She's famous for wanting to join the convent at a young age. How old was she when she finally was allowed to enter the convent? And the correct answer is she was 15. With the permission of the Pope, she entered the convent at age 15. And our final question, after the death of her husband, she moved to which state where she founded a religious order? And the correct answer is Maryland. So now let's take a look at the number of votes that these three saints got. And here is the number of votes. And for the first time ever, all three saints got more than 100 votes. So this was a tough one to decide. But our top vote getter with 197 votes was Saint Elizabeth Ann Seton. And also moving on to face off with Saint Elizabeth in the second round with 170 votes is Moses the Black, who will move on and battle with St. Elizabeth in the second round, which means that St. Therese of Lisieux, sadly, will be eliminated from the series. So taking a look at the bracket here, we'll see those two saints moving on and St. Therese will be eliminated. So now let's bid farewell to St. Therese with a prayer. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, who grant us, we pray, to walk in the footsteps of thy blessed Therese with a humble heart, that we may attain everlasting rewards, who live and reign without end. Amen. St. Therese of Lisieux, pray for us. And now it's time to meet Saints. Round one. Our saints for today are Saint Valentine, Saint Rita of Pascia, and Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque. Today we will begin with Saint Valentine. He was born into one of the noblest families of Rome in the 3rd century AD. Later, St. Valentine became a Catholic priest and a doctor. Valentine specifically worked with marriages. The Roman Emperor Claudius II, however, forbade Roman soldiers from marrying. St. Valentine thought this was kind of dumb and married people in secret. Because of this, he was thrown in prison. He was put under the supervision of a ruthless man, Asterius. Asterius required for Valentine to restore his daughter Julia's eyesight. So Valentine placed his hands over her head and prayed, and her eyesight was restored and she was able to see. Asterius was amazed and converted to Christianity, along with 46 members of his family. When Claudius II found out what happened, he was not happy. In fact, he was so angry, he ordered them both to be killed. 
St. Valentine and Asterius were most likely beheaded on February 14th, 271 AD. On his execution day, he wrote a letter signed, From Your Valentine, to Julia, Asterius' daughter, whom he had fallen in love with. This started the tradition of people sending notes and valentines to people that you love. In 475, Pope Gelasius made February 14th the official St. Valentine's Day. And now for the presentation of St. Rita of Castia. She was born in Rocca Porina, Italy in 1381. From a very early age, Rita started fasting and praying in order to focus more on her faith. Rita was also very obedient to her parents, and she rarely questioned them or their instructions. As a child, Rita never cared for sports or fancy clothing. Instead, she focused on her faith and being the best version of herself. At a young age, Rita became pregnant with her first child, and by the age of 12, she had two children whose names were Gian Giacomo Antonio Mancini, and Paolo Maria Mancini. At the age of 36, Rita entered the monastery of St. Mary Magdalene in Caschia. She became an Augustinian nun, and she was considered a holy and prayerful nun. During her life, Rita received many miracles. For example, during her work as a nun, she received a wound from the crown of thorns on her forehead. Another example is when the Lord Jesus appeared to her three days before her death and promised her the joys of heaven. Three days after this, Rita passed away. Her feast day is May 22nd. Her feast day is May 22nd, and she is the patron saint of impossible cases, difficult marriages, and parenthood. Saint Rita was known as Saint of the Impossible, and she had a very holy and prayerful life. Rita of Caschia is an inspiration to many people, and she was a great saint and person. And lastly, we'll learn about St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. St. Margaret Mary of Alacoque is the patron saint of those suffering with polio, devotees of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the loss of parents. She fell ill at 12 years old and was bedridden until the age of 15. St. Margaret Mary made a vow to the Blessed Virgin Mary to consecrate herself to religious life and was healed of her illness. She went to school with the poor Clares at Chirolles, France. St. Margaret entered the Visitation Convent at 24 years old after Jesus came to her in a vision. He told her to become a nun and reminded her of her vow to Mary. She was a French Roman Visitation Nun at Pere le Monial, France. She was officially admitted in 1672. St. Margaret Mary worked at the infirmary in the convent where she tended to the sick and injured. She received her visions during Holy Hour on Thursday and Holy Communion on the first Friday of each month. Her visions were about Jesus. St. Claude de la Colombière helped convince people St. Margaret Mary's visions were real. St. Margaret Mary is an incorruptible, which means her body is the same as when she died. Her body is currently in the Visitation Monastery in Pare le Monial, France.